Welcome to February here at Happy Nights Page. Afternoon, folks. Ali me again, Sean from Happy Dies Veg. Uh, it is Friday, the 4th of February, I think. I know it's 2022, that for sure, I know. So you find me here, and what can only be described as a very cold day today, actually. Well, I say very cold. I'm still feeling the, the effects of this cold I've had, a bit of flu or whatever it was. So you'll have to excuse me if I'm sniffling and sounding a bit bunged up also you'll have to excuse me because it's so windy out, to, out here I've had to set up this little fluffy uh, microphone so I don't know how the sound's going to be so you'll probably be able to pick up every breath every sigh every under every swear word under my breath and everything but notwithstanding you'll notice that I'm standing by my IBC container raised vegetable bed. Now I did put a video out there earlier on in the week saying to everybody if you're interested in this watch out for this kind of video you'll see the little thumbnail picture you know if it's got the IBC container on it you know it's going to have something to do with this this new invention of mine. So I wanted a quick brief rundown I wanted to create a raised growing area, quite a, quite a, a significant area really for this, this coming growing season. Uh, and I was going to do some of my round raised beds that I did last year. Well, they work well, apart from the fact it's very hard to put any kind of protection over them. And as I said before, my main enemy at, in growing vegetables is the wind. Obviously, we've got frosts, snow. I don't get a lot of snow here. Even though there was a fluttering of snow on top of Elephant, Elephant Mountain this morning when I came out, we don't get much snow, or I haven't had much snow since I've lived here, so I'm not too worried about the snow, but it's the frost, the high winds, and the wind chill factor. Adding to that, if that's not enough, moles, rats, rabbits, yep. So the wind's picked up, so I don't know what, I'm going to turn around a bit, so I'm just going to protect this mic from the wind a bit. So, but you know the rules, because I'm feeling a bit rough, not that that's, that that's got anything to do with it. You know the rules, what are the rules? I'm going to put it up on the screen for there's a good reason. No tea, no work. Now I want you to remember, all of you in the UK, I want you to remember that rule. It's one of the only rules I follow. Because that, that rule is going to come in useful any day now. So let's let's go back to what we were talking about in the first place. So I got my IBC container. I gave it a brief explanation of what I wanted to do and what it was for. And for those of you who missed for those of you who missed it, go back to that little introduction introduction video so all this makes sense. So I don't want this video to drag on and it's dragging on already and I haven't even started yet. So let's get right into it. I wanted to create a raised vegetable bed that minimises the bending down, gives you some protection from the harsh cross winds and the wind chill factor and the frosts. And also in the same token is adaptable so you can put some kind of netting over it to protect it from cabbage white fly uh, carrot fly or anything that you think might be wanting to eat or damage your crops pigeons anything so I came up with this idea so now first of all you'll notice that this this IBC container or what's left of it uh, is standing on top of this trolley I don't know whether you can see the trolley in the video it's standing on top of this trolley this is a purpose-made trolley that I've built designed to transport these IBC containers because there's going to be a lot of these I've already got five of these I did have six one two three four five six seven I've got seven IBC containers that harvest rainwater off my shed I've got one that is full of a horse manure creating horse tea compost I've got another one that is uh, a bioreactor 
experimental composting bed to compost down all my chicken bedding and waste. So there's enough containers that have got to be moved around the place. And then there's gonna be, for this season, I'm hoping to have six of these up and running. So let's get straight into it. I'm gonna put pictures up on the screen of measurements and close-ups. Uh, and I'm, gonna, I'm, I'm obviously gonna miss things out. So any questions or anybody's got any ideas, you know, good or bad, you know, don't be too harsh with me because, you know, this is experimenting. This is the Mark One version, yeah? But I think this is, when you see this, I think you'll agree with me, this is a fantastic idea. So, I've got the IBC container. Don't forget, it's on the trolley. I decided where I wanted to cut it off. So, I cut off all these bars with an angle grinder. Now, if you take the two supporting metal bars off the top of the IBC container, tip it on its side, you can pull this plastic container out easily and you've got enough room to get in there with a hacksaw, yeah? So you don't need an angle grinder, but an angle grinder just makes it easier. But you can do it with a hacksaw. So I measured them all level, measuring off, off this bar, and I cut them all off and I removed the top part of the cage. And then I also measured where I wanted to cut this container off. So I cut the top of the container off and I'm not gonna lie, I took the container out and I lay it on its side and I used a circular saw. Now you could use a small little wood saw, you could use a jigsaw, uh, anything like that. It's a bit fiddly because it's all wibbly wobbly, but you know, if you take your time and be careful, wear your gloves as well and your goggles, you'll, 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 you'll do it. So now I'm left with, let's call it half the cage, but more than half of the container. The container is cut off higher than these bars for two reasons. The main reason is so when you're leaning over, you're not gonna be in contact with any of these, these metal edges. Even though I've folded these down, these are smooth. Yeah, you, can, you could buy plastic caps and put plastic caps on. But as I say, this is the first one I've done. So, I'm left now with half a cage. Let's call it two thirds of a container. Sitting there on the pallet, perfect. I'm planning on putting a mixture of well-rotted horse manure, old compost from last season, the topsoil that I dig up or I collect from the mole hills, what I call mole gold, and probably, I'll probably put a bag or two of brand new compost in there just to give it a bit of va -va voom you know, a little bit of uh, encouragement. So, I'm planning on filling it up to about there. Now the height you cut this off is entirely up to you if you want to do, attempt one of these projects yourself. Think about what you want to grow in there. Think about how much height you've got in the first place. And that'll determine how much you fill the raised bed up with growing medium. But obviously, the more you put in, the more you're going to need, the more expense you're going to spend. An expense we'll come on to shortly. So, so now I've got my cage. The cage is fixed to the bottom of the pallet. Oh, and this is, this is sitting on a plastic pallet. It has got a bit of wood in, but this is the only one I'm using wood. Because you're gonna be sitting this on, in your garden, your field, or your allotment, it's gonna be prone to the wet, damp weather, yeah? So if you can get one that's sitting on the plastic pallet, or even better, like my others, all metal, uh, they'll last forever. And this will last forever, by the way, yeah? This will last forever. So, I've cut the cage off. It just so happens that the size of this tube is small enough to slide perfectly into some one inch uh, of this plastic MDPE pipe that everybody uses on the allotments, you know, to build the, the, the net frames out of them to protect the crops, yeah? MDPE stands for medium density polyethylene. You can get HDPE, which is high density polyethylene, but that's what that is. All allotment holders have got that. 
a lot of allotment holders have got these uh, IBC containers as well. So, I've put four pieces of this plastic pipe, two on each corner. And I'll show you what that for in, in a short while. I've also cut a small piece, not of the one inch, but of the 20 mil, the th uh, three quarter inch pipe. And I've bolted it in between the, the metal frame and the IBC container plastic itself. And that is holding this container in its place. Not that it's going anywhere. But there's another reason for that. I've got two of those there and two on the other side. And they are gently pushing this side, or the majority of this side, and the opposite side, pushing it slightly in an inch. And while it's in this state of play, I advise you drill a load, a load of uh, drainage holes in the bottom, but I will be lining this out with uh, a top quality weed membrane, yeah, none of the cheap stuff, top quality weed membrane, which will help keep all the worms in. The worms won't want to wriggle out the holes in the bottom. That is the bottom half complete. Yep. Yeah. As I say, the height you cut it off is entirely up to you. So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to stop, because I'm plugged into this mic, I'm going to stop the vi this video here, and then I'm going to get back to you, and I'm going to put the protective lid on. Right, I'm back. Now this is the beauty of my design. You can see and I'll, I'll, you'll see in the, the still pictures I put inside this video, you'll see that this top has overlapped about three inches the bottom container. And it is resting, it is resting on these spacers, these stoppers that I've put in on both sides. So there's no way that that, that, that can go down. Now admittedly, I haven't got the lid on there, but I've got a lid for this. So, <clears throat> Early in the season, when you've put your young and tender plants out and you're worried about them, like I was two years ago, and I lost a load of plants, and I lost a load this year, and the high wind, the storm, ruined, <coughs> excuse me, the high winds ruined all my leaks. I thought I've got to come up with a better way of protecting the plants. So, early in the season, you planted your plants out, hopefully after your last frost date, but just because the last frost has gone, don't think your plants are, are, are over the worst of it. During the night, the cold wind's blowing, and with the chill factor and the evaporation of the moisture off the leaves of your plants, it'll just kill your young tender plants. Kill them, I was gonna say overnight, a lot less time, but you'll wake up in the morning and all your little plants will be dead and if you've got no spares, you can't replant, <clears throat> and you're gonna end up crying, or like I did, swearing. So this raised bed gives you the ability to plant your young tender plants and keep them covered over of a night time or during the day if you're expecting frosty, cold, bad weather, depending where you live and your situation. You can put this lid on and off to suit yourself. But during the, during the early weeks of the season, after your last frost date, and I say few weeks, I don't know, let's say a month. Uh, my last frost date, January, February, March, April, May. I can't remember when my last frost date is. I'll put my last frost date up on the screen somewhere if I remember. But it's quite late. And we were still having frosts really late last year and I couldn't believe it. And I was waiting to plant everything out and, uh, and all my plants were suffering and dying and leggy and you know, it was a nightmare. So this will enable you to plant your plants and then of a night time or during the day, put them in there and this will protect them from the harsh torrential downpours of rain, the high winds, the wind chill factor and a lot of protection against that frosting and that burning of the leaves. So this essentially is the same, in that condition, that is essentially like a mini greenhouse polytunnel 
or a cold fry yeah because a lot of people's green ices are not heated most people's polytunnels are not heated yeah and no cold frames are heated right i'm back sorry about that just had a delivery van turn up so as i said this ibc container now to me has changed from an ibc container and it's like a polytunnel a greenhouse or a cold fry so you could you could use this once it's full of your soil you could use this as a cold fry you could just take the lid off and then when you're trying to harden up those plants you can sit the plants on top yeah if it's a nice day you can leave the lid off a bit if it's not a nice day but you just want to get them used to a bit of the cold you can leave the lid put the lid back on so in itself i think that is a marvelous little uh marvelous little invention so what i'll do now is i'll take this i'll take this top off and i'll show you what it looks like with you'll love this with the other top on bear with me one second there you go <clears throat> out the top of the cage that you've cut off you create yourself a meshed protective netting so when the season goes by and you don't need the protection of the plastic cover you take the plastic cover off and you replace it with your netted insect protection i say insects and birds so now you've got all your lovely little plants growing in there and your worms are running around in there enjoying life you've got the knowledge that you've got a, a rock solid protective netted area protecting your crops from the nasties you know now admittedly you could say to me sure you know the nasties can get up in there yes they can they can but this is the first one I did yep so what I'm thinking is I could and this was a, a an off cut of nest that I had yeah if you made the net longer then when you put the lid on you could just tuck the net inside there and it would be fully fully protective but I'm quite happy leaving it like that also let's just talk about watering your plants while this is on you'd be able to get your watering can or your hose pipe and you'd just be able to water it through there the water will just spray through there yeah so you haven't got a problem watering it with that and with the when you've got the plastic lid on if you're still using the plastic lid but you just want to add a bit of water or a bit of uh, liquid fertilizer to your plants you can water it through the hole in the top of the lid because it's easily accessible so that now is how you use the top half of the cage and that is why i've got those blue pieces of pipe there they slide onto these uprights and stop it coming coming off yeah yeah perfect so it's going nowhere so now you know you've got a self-contained flower bed which is roughly 12 square feet of growing space and uh you know you've got a not you've got depending on how deep your soil is you've got that much growing height yeah which in itself is plenty high enough for a lot of a lot of crops leeks onions you know all sorts of things and here's the rub here's, here's the good bit if you decided you wanted to uh let's say grow some sprout plants in there now you wouldn't put many sprout plants in there you'd probably put four or six sprout plants depending on the variety in there yeah you can extend this here leave that where it is yeah and you can put another bar you'll need one on each side though you can slide another piece of bar on there as tall as you like to make that cage go higher and then all you've got to do is put extra netting around it so that is limitless you you could you could have that from there have it six seven foot high you could grow sweet corn in there yeah so that is a that is adjustable on your height to suit your needs yeah so what i want to do is i just want to go over some of the pros and some of the cons 
But to do that, I've got the list on my board in my shed. So I'm going to take you back to the shed and I'm going to explain uh, a couple of the pros and a couple of cons. But that there, ladies and gentlemen, is the Happy Days Veg. Three in one. Is it three in one? It's a raised bed. It's like a mini greenhouse and it's a, a protective netted bed. Three in one. Three, two, one. Ted Rogers, Dusty Bin. Right, I'm back. You probably won't be able to read it. Well, you definitely won't be able to read it. I've got, because I've got handwriting like a doctor with arthritis. So, I've got a list of pros and a list of cons. Good, bad, yeah? So, let's, let's go over the bad points first. The first point is, I'll admit, it's not the prettiest of flower beds. I'll grant you that, yeah? One idea I did have is this. If that's your IBC container, yeah, and uh, it's surrounded in a cage on a pallet, actually I shouldn't do that because the pallet, the pallet is the same, the same width as the, as the IBC container, yeah? Right, there. What you can do is you could clad that bottom half in reclaimed timber, yeah, reclaimed pallets or whatever, yeah. You could clad the bottom in timber, so So it looks more attractive to the eye, yeah? Am I gonna do that? No, why? Because nobody can see them where they're. Mine are at the back of my polytunnel, nobody can see them. Uh, the land over there is just surrounded by, it's just full of sheep and cows. But that is a way you could clad it in timber to make it more aesthetically pleasing to the eye, right? So. Not the prettiest of edge beds, I grant you, we can rub that off there, number one's gone, but I think the, the, the good points far outweigh the bad points. Also, another problem you're going to have is transportation. Now, there's literally millions of these IBC containers scattered around the globe sitting there doing nothing, yeah? And the range in price, depending, you know, where you are and what you're doing, and also depending the condition of them, yeah, obviously the better and cleaner condition they are, the more expensive they are. Now, I'm not gonna lie to anybody, I paid 25 pounds each for these IBC containers, yeah? That one's on a plastic pallet, the others are on metal pallets, and I've also gave the lady an, another, uh, uh, I've gave her the money, full, full amount of money for another three on metal pallets, yeah? 25 pounds each. Which I think is fantastic value, yeah? Considering you spend one pound 50 or two pound on a cheap plastic bucket from B&Q or all these other cheap, cheap shops, yeah? So I think that's value for money. Yes, you've got to jet wash it out yourself, but even the clean ones, I advise to jet wash and, and, and uh, bleach them out, yeah? So once you find your IBC container, you've got to get it to either A, the area where it's going to be positioned eventually, which is either in your garden or in your field or on your allotment plot. Or, you know, depending where all your tools are. Now, if you want to take all your tools to the allotment, by all means do that, but for God's sake, don't leave them there. Make sure you bring them back. Because your shed will only get broken. It's look at the drawer, your shed will get broken into. You lose all your tools and then you're moaning at me then. So bring all your tools back. So you're either gonna need a, a van to transport it or a small trailer, find somebody who's got a trailer or a van or whatever, or see if the person who sells them can deliver. Now, that's your, that's your biggest problem, uh, moving it around. Just bear that in mind. 
Also, don't be scared to ask them if they'll, you know, can knock a bit of money off. All they can do is say no. There's thousands of people selling these IBC containers, yeah? And they hang on to them and they wanna, they're, they're, they're cashing in. They're all cashing in on this COVID craze of increasing the prices for, for no apparent reason. And, you know, instead of selling them at a reasonable price, yeah, and making a smaller profit margin, but a higher turnover, they've got all these IBC containers. Have a look, they're, they're all out there. The pot stacked high, going nowhere, because they're pricing themselves out the market, yeah? God, that was a moan, wasn't he? So, that's that. So let's get on to the, let's get on to the, the good points, yeah? Compared to a lot of other raised beds, yeah? Construction raised beds, yeah? And I'm not talking about Mickey Mouse ones made out of tiny little reclaimed pallet wood, yeah? That isn't gonna last five minutes. You, you'll break it with a wheelbarrow, you'll break it with a shovel, it'll rot away. I'm not interested in all that. I appreciate the fact that we're trying to do things, not so much on the cheap, and definitely not for free, but there comes a time in your life when you've got to put your hand in your pockets and you're gonna to have to spend some money, yeah? You only get what you pay for, yeah? But, after saying that, number one, it was cheap, yeah? It was cheap. IBC container, cost me, 25 English pounds, yeah. Everybody who grows their own vegetables has already got netting lying around, just screwed up. Have a look on every allotment, it's screwed up behind the shed, lying around, rotting away. We've all got that netting. I use tiny little cheap plastic tie wraps to tie wrap it onto, yeah. Now, if you don't like tie wraps and you want to do it some other way, feel free. The tie wraps, for 100 tie wraps, uh, I pay about £1.50 for 100 tiny little tie wraps, yeah? One bag, uh, £2.50, I'll do two of these containers, right? So we're gonna add, we're gonna add another £1.50 on. The blue plastic pipe, yeah? <laughs> Have a look on any allotment, You'll see people making hoop protective houses out of it with nets on and polythene on for cloches. People use the bigger stuff to make polytunnels. They use it all the time. That's easy, easily uh, available, yeah? But if you want, you could go out and you can buy yourself a 25 meter roll. Now you don't need 25 meters. You need, you're gonna need one, two, three, four, four, you're gonna need about four foot or five foot in length of that blue plastic pipe from the corners to all the two frames together, yeah? I can't really give you a price for that. All I know is that even for a 25 meter roll, it's not, in my opinion, it's not that expensive, but I reckon you're gonna pay for an off cut, you're gonna pay on, on Facebook Marketplace or wherever, I'd say an off cut of 10, 20 feet is gonna cost you no more than five or 10 pounds. So let's go Dad's Army, let's say it's 10 pounds. Yeah, what else is that? You're swilling it out, bit of fairly liquid, job done. And then all you need is, you need uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, you need eight screws to hold the little blue plastic uprights in. Yeah, and then you need some six mil long bolts to bolt through the side of the container, through the bar, to put that one inch plastic pipe in, which is the stop, four of them, which stops the lid coming down, yeah? I don't know how much the nuts and bolts are on the screws. Let's add on, I don't know, the cheapest chips, I don't know, two pounds, three pounds. Let's add on a fiver, yeah? because I'm just rounding things up here and being very generous on the prices, yeah? You could do this cheaper. What have you got left out of that fiver? Obviously, you buy yourself some biscuits with, yeah? So what we got? We've got 50p there, five, six, 11 there, two, three, four. Grand total of 41 pound 50 for that raised vegetable bed. 
yeah? And I'm gonna round that down to an even 40 pounds. Yeah. I guarantee you now, you are not gonna get a better raised bed than that, cheaper than that, yeah? But your main, your main, your main, uh, your main problem is your IBC container. This is your main cost there, the IBC container. But don't, when you find it, don't be scared to ask for discount or just say, you know, I'm on a budget. Uh, any chance of just, you know, knocking a bit off. So that's that. So let's get on to the good points now. Number two, it gives you fantastic perfection, uh, protection from high winds, frost, the wind chill factor, and pests. Now, now, round here, we suffer terribly with moles. The moles are the size of beavers. The rabbits are the size of sheep. Uh, and and there's, not forgetting your mice and your rats and your stoats. Now, the stoats help kill all the rats and the mice, so they ain't too bad. But... It's the high winds and the wind chill factor that concern me. So this will give you great protection, as I say, great protection from the pests, high winds, frost and the rain and the wind chill factor. So what else have we got? It's non-permanent, it's movable. You can move it around, yeah, obviously. Not when it's full of soil. Next one. So, so easy to make. So easy to make. You need minimal tools. You need some screwdrivers. Admittedly, you're gonna need some of those star-shaped headed screwdriver bits, yeah. I don't know what size it is. It depends on, I've, got, I've bought three IBC containers and two of them have got different size ones on, so I can't tell you what size it is. You just have to, you know, Buy a little set of those star screwdriver bits from that well-known German supermarket that has deals on on the Thursday. Uh, and use those. So what else do you need? You're going to need a tank measure, a Sharpie marker. You're going to need a hacksaw, but better if you've got an angle grinder, but a hacksaw is fine. A pair of gloves, some goggles. And then you're going to need some kind of saw to saw this plastic in half. And then you're going to need some... Uh, uh, Wire snips to cut the tie wraps. That's what I think you need. Yeah, so it's very easily made. Yeah, easily made. But if you want, if you want me to show you any any little bit on there, just message me and I'll show you. Right. This is another great thing. If you're like me and you suffer with bad knees and a bad back. I'm trying to make my life easier, not just for now, but the longevity of vegetable growing, yeah? So I, I don't grow anything actually in the ground. I do in the garden, but that's the garden, that's different. Anything, any vegetables I grow are all in, in, are in raised beds, containers, or my self-watering system in my polytunnel, yeah? I don't grow anything in the ground. But there's various reasons for that, and I'm not going to go into it. The one being, I haven't got any flat land anywhere, and... Uh, it's very, 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 very stony. So, these beds are easy to access. Yeah, perfect for weeding, because there will be a bit of weeding. You don't have to bend down, or hardly bend down. You can get access all the way around to it, yeah. It's easy for, for planting your veg vegetable plants, and it's easy for harvesting, yeah. Easy access, perfect. And I'm not joking. Here's the rub. This is a great thought. Depending on how high you make that bottom piece, it's perfect accessibility for anybody who's in a wheelchair. So if you if you're if you're a wheelchair user, yeah, and you think, oh, I can't, there's no way I can create anything to be able to grow any vegetables. Believe you me, this, this raised IBC container vegetable bed is the way forward. Yeah, so that's that. 
yeah, as I say, no bending down. And another thing, last one I thought of, it'll last forever. Unlike you would, unlike you wouldn't raise beds, yeah. Uh, they're not gonna last forever. Wood doesn't last forever. I'm forever changing fence posts, yeah, uh, and things. So, this, these will outlive me, yeah. So there's another thing. You're not having to go back to it and, and, and there's no maintenance. No maintenance at all. And as I say, it's not the prettiest of containers. So you could clad the outside of it, the bottom outside, with timber to make it look nice. Maybe in the summer, if I can get enough reclaimed timber, I might do one just to show you. But I've got no intention to do in mine. Yeah. So I think you'll find that that is a fantastic uh, solution for growing vegetables in exposed, very windy, exposed conditions like I am here in North Wales. I mean, the wind's just blowing through this open door now and it's freezing. So can you imagine what your little plants are, are feeling? So yeah, I'm pretty sure this video is gonna take some serious editing because I can't remember whether I've swore or not. Uh, and there's been a drastic lack of turkey and biscuits. But let me know what you think and, uh, and we'll take from there. Any questions, any, even if you think it's a silly question, Sean, how did you do this? What's that for? Why have you done that? Just ask me, there's no such thing as a silly question, yeah? You might get a silly answer, but there's no such thing as a silly, stupid question. Uh, what else do I know? That's enough, I think, for this video. I think, as I say, I'm gonna put some photographs up during this uh, video. This video is gonna be long. It might have to be two videos, I don't know. And I think the next video, or the next few photographs, it will be eventually of when uh, I've cleared the space where these first six are going this season, and they're ready, with soiling, ready to be planted. Uh, so yeah, until then, you take care, and I'll see you guys later. It's time for a cup of tea. Happy days.